Hey everyone, this is Kalir. Today we are going to play Pyre. This is the newest uh, game by Super Giant Games. They created Bastion and Transistor before this. Both games that I completely adore. This is their newest game. It's a little different from their past two. You're going to see how it differs in its main aspect very soon. Pyre is a game with many themes to it. Themes of mercy and triumph and the opposites of those things. Loss and injustice. All sorts of stuff. More importantly, it is something of a visual novel. And I know that's something that has been derided a lot by true Doom gamer heads, but I feel like it works out here. Vitalios. Basically, what's going to happen here is we're going to have people talking with us. We're going to learn about this place we're in the downside and the place that we came from, the Commonwealth, and the people who inhabit the downside. Because we're stuck here. <laughs> oh, yeah, so. Uh, this is Super Giant Games. They're pretty good about gender stuff in general, so it could be that we are a she, could be that we're a he, could be that they don't really... They're not going to make an assumption about our gender. But hey, I'm going to say I'm a he, because I last I checked, I'm a he. Super enough. <laughs> Do let me know, by the way, if the audio of this game is... Uh, too loud compared to me because I can take a bit of time to fix this up. You will see little bits of window up here. Uh, getting this thing to actually display properly was a bit of a hassle. Also, the music in this game, as it is with basically every Super Giant game, is pretty great. Anyway, we are not dead yet. This is Hedwin, one of the three Masked Wanderers. We are going to get very familiar with Hedwin and the other two as we go through our travels. We'll be traveling in this black wagon. It's... Eh, it's, it's a place that will help, I don't know. Hey look, it's another person. <laughs> Alright. So we got Jodariel, we got Hedwin, and we got Rookie. Can I what now? What? what? So. This is a game where there are a lot of choices you can make throughout the story, and they will affect it later down the road, sometimes in small ways, sometimes in very large ways. In this case, he's asking if we can read. Literacy has, of course, been prohibited for centuries. So, do we? are we someone who reads? Are we going to pretend that, no, we don't know how to read whatsoever? Or are we just going to plead the fifth? Do note that whichever we choose will have a little bit of an impact. Again, some choices later down will have much, much more of an impact. But for now, what do you guys think? Are we a reader? Are we totally not a reader? I don't know what you're talking about. Or are we suddenly very interested in the weave of the throw rug? Seeing someone saying reading is important, we're, we're a reader. Yeah. Okay, so they want us to read something of theirs. Yeah, all right. Must be this strange book. There's a whole bunch of stuff around here, though, but there will be more stuff later. Pick up one of the old and heavy volumes bound in materials you do not recognize. What's the best thing you've got?
You, dear reader, are an exile of the downside, such as we, the eight who wrote this Book of Rights. That you possess it and have capacity to glean its words is testament enough to your potential. Thus we reveal a path from this forsaken place to freedom, a homecoming in glory. The stars themselves shall be our guide, ere the turning of the earth's first solstice. Seek the nearest longitude beneath the brightest of the eight that the align has shown. Arrive as a triumvirate, clad in the raiment of the rites, bearing this book. Oblige the voice that tells you more. Well, that's mysterious. Kisantirna. Oh, hang on. I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Get back to you. Gotta pet my dog. We gotta have a loading screen. We gotta wonder just what we have stepped into now. Here, can you read this mysterious cursed tome? Reader! Dare you tamper with forbidden knowledge? Hell yeah! So soon after your sentence into exile. Uh, yeah. It is true what the book says. You can be free again. Perhaps not you yourself, but someone worthy of the privilege. You witness now the path toward salvation. You witness the rights, the one way to return to glory. Though in your case, I hardly think it possible. So, Yet, by the grace of the scribes, it is my duty to inform Cosmo. you. Cosmo is here, and he loves you all. Hello, Shay. Okay, so that guy, the voice is uh logan cunningham the same narrative person the same narrator who spoke throughout bastion and transistor he has a pretty wide range of voices yeah okay so these guys are convinced all four of us are gonna go free but first we have to show them how so, these are the rights. This is the main gameplay within Pyre. A it celestial is... orb falls from the heavens when the time is nigh. <laughs> Exiles conduct the rites as a triumvirate, for they must prove their trust in one another, not just in themselves. The three must act as one. So yeah, uh, it's explaining everything pretty clearly right here. Now plunge into the pyre with the orb and be purified. Alright, here we go. Here is the goal of the game. They will have a tri each team will have a triumvirate of three exiles. Your goal is to get into the pyre holding yes. the orb. The exile Jogariel has the way of it. Whoever steps into the flame is banished for a time. Yeah, this doesn't kill you. I know it looks like it would probably kill you, but no, you will be own. fine eventually. Oh, but it is not so simple. In the rights, you shall face adversaries whose own freedom is at stake. Beware the aura that surrounds them, as they shall beware yours. Alright, so, these auras here, this is your way of banishing other players. The aura is your wrongdoing. Accept it as a part of you. Cast your aura like a stone. You can also fire your aura like that. Like, for now, he's going to explain it pretty clearly. Again. Just so. A glorious performance, I admit. More than I expected from the likes of you. Grasp the orb once more. The Done. orb absorbs the aura. Then the orb quenches the flame. So yeah, if Hedwin tries to go in there with the no, orb, I say he can't do it because Sleep he will hit their auras first. Strength. Unless... We do a hop. Thus sails the orb into the waiting flame. 
Yeah, every time you score by uh, jumping into the pyre, you'll be banished until either side scores again. Also, each of our three exiles has different stats. Uh, it's pretty obvious who has the stats in which area. Hedwin is the more average mm, indeed. of our three. Joe Daryl is the heavyweight. And Rookie is the speedy Sublime. one. They all have different stats, which I will go over elsewhere. I got the hops. The orb, take it. Eh, I'm good. I'm fine. Whoosh. Give me that. Give me that orb. I need it. I need it for reasons. The right is complete. Donks, there, dear reader. Now you understand. So this is the main uh, gameplay part of the game. There's going to be a lot of the text, of that some choices we will do as part of that, but the core I of the game is this. The right. Cast down your hope. And this dick. But all those such as you? You can't see it, but I'm doing the double deuce. You never listen. I'm not listening. I'm doing the double deuce. And yeah, one thing that is kind of controversial about this game as far as the controls go is you can only control one of your three exiles at a time. And if you have the orb, then whoever you're controlling has the orb. You pass it to them. It's weird, but they did that on purpose that the computer would not be able to micromanage their three be guys better than yours. Let's check out some stars. Where shall the rights commence? Alright. Between each of the rights, you will gaze to the stars, try to find the one that shines the brightest. Uh, this one looks pretty good. There we go, the Ridge of Gol. And we are currently down there. Alright, so if we hurry over there, we will get there in time. <laughs> You know what that means? Road trip, road trip, road trip. And yeah, each the like everyone here has their own personality. It's you'll learn them as you adventure with them. Generally, uh, Rookie is like the most energetic and optimistic and friendly. Edwin's kind of just a measured like he's happy to have you around, but he's not going to be loud about it. And Joe Dario is of course very suspicious and uh, brusque, I think is the word for it. 